As you declare the Word of God in every circumstance, the atmosphere of the world around you must change and be conformed to words of truth spoken in faith. Join Kenneth Copeland and David Barton as they reveal God's truth on the Believer's Voice of Victory. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday's edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Father, we praise you today. We lift our voice, we lift our hearts and minds to receive by faith revelation from heaven, your knowledge, your word, your ways of doing things. And we thank you for it. We give you the praise and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother David, let's go back over there to the book of Malachi, the last book in the Old Covenant. And notice in the third chapter, the twelfth verse, all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land. Mm -hmm. Now, the United States experienced yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. Now, we've noticed and seen over the last uh, hundred years a definite decline. In the last fifty years, it nosedive. took this nosedive. That don't mean it's over. That's right. And don't you get the idea it's over. It's not because God's not done. Mm -hmm. But now notice this. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken so much against you? You have said it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we've kept his ordinance? and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. And now we call the proud happy. Actually, the, in the original text in the Hebrew, it's blessed. Talking mm -hmm. about the blessing of the Lord. We, why, even the proud are blessed, and they that work wickedness are set up, or they are built up, and they are prospering. Well, uh, and they that tempt God are even delivered. <laughs> and God said, your words have been stout against me. It matters what yeah. you say. Yeah. Jesus, very, uh, everything that he did and everything he said, he said, I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see him do. And, and he said, I say unto you, arise. Have faith in God. Whosoever shall say mm -hmm. to that mountain, be removed, cast into the sea. Not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, that's vital, important information in our own personal lives of faith. It's vitally important in our families, in our churches. David, there's too much socialistic practice in the business you affairs of, of churches. Yep. Because they've been taught in school that that's the way you do it. Yep. Well, go back to this book yep. and find out how the thing should be conducted and you get back into being coming a delightsome place because of the presence of God. Now, go back to this again. All nations will call you blessed and you're a delightsome land. Your words have been stout against me. How do you stop that? You take his words and you begin to say, right. oh, this is a blessed land. God is, God is God over the United States of America. We're calling things that be not as though they were. Yeah. Well, they, then they become. Yeah. I'm telling you, David, two people with faith are a majority. That's right. You know, in, in, in seeing how that was laid out, they're to light, they're to light some land, and now the words are stout, and now the wicked are exalted, and everything everything's reversed. And and the difference between where they were and where they are is the words that were spoken in the mid middle of it. So they start out being really good. Now we got a real situation that needs to be reversed. But what got you in that situation was the words that were spoken. And this reminds me of the scripture, Second Second Corinthians two eleven where it says the reason that Satan gets an advantage over you is you don't recognize his traps. If you would recognize his traps, he would, what happens is we don't recognize negative words when they come. We don't recognize negative news reporting. We don't recognize criticism and we let it get in. 
and when it gets in here, it goes in here, and when it gets in here, it comes out the and mouth. And most people don't resist that. They just blah, 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 yeah, right they, along. They but repeat what they've heard, and, and therefore they're repeating negative reports, they're repeating bad stuff. And it does matter. And it does matter. One, one of the things that stands out to me is you go back to Genesis chapter 3, and God has created the Garden of Eden. He's created man. Everything is, I mean, it's the way God wanted it. This is, everything's perfect. And the way so you would say that's the perfect will of God for all men for all time. That's what He laid out. That's what He laid out. Before yeah. before we goofed it out, this is what He gave us. So so we goofed it up, and the way it gets started is in chapter three, verse one. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made, and He said unto the woman, here He's speaking stuff. Has God really said? And the first thing he does is he raises doubt. He says, oh, wait a minute, let me make another point over here that you might not be aware of. And, and he starts in by saying things that get you off the track of what God has said and given. So what got you off track is you heard, she heard a negative report and she believed it. And when she heard that negative report and believed it, now that leads her to do things, then she says to Adam, and then here they go off in the wrong direction. And that tactic of, of people feeding in negative words, speaking negative words, how we respond to that or how we reject it is going to have a huge impact not only on us but on our nation. And, and, and that tactic, if we can recognize that when somebody comes at us with negative words and negative reports and whatever it is, if we can recognize that's a trap and not step into it, not repeat that stuff, yeah, not don't, spread don't, it on, yeah. that, and there's that, that right there, Genesis 3, Verse 1 is the first manifestation of what is called deconstructionism. It is to take what God has constructed and deconstruct it and tear it down. And so what happens is God's given you something really great. He gave you a delightsome, wholesome land. How do you deconstruct that? You deconstruct it by what you say, by tearing it down. Your words against me have been stout. That's how we move from being a great land to being a poor land is the, the words that are spoken. Had you get out of the Garden of Eden and, and being cast into, into darkness, it was what was spoken, and you believed it. So uh, the, the best example I have of this, the way that it works nationally, and this is the way it works in politics, the way it works in everything else, is let me just use a scenario. I'm from a little town west of Fort Worth. We don't have many people in our town, but let's say somebody has a great vision for our town. They want everybody in our town to be employed. They want them to have a state-of-the-art job, good income, great vision for everybody. What they're going to do is they're going to move into our little town of Alito and they're going to build a hundred story skyscraper that will put everybody to work. They're going to have an opportunity to work if they want to. It's going to be high technology. It's going to be best environment you can possibly have. But we got a crowd in town that doesn't want a new skyscraper in town. and They don't care how good it's going to be. They don't want it. They don't like it. So if I'm on the other side that wants to keep this, this thing from happening in town, if I want to keep people from supporting it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tour of that building and I'm going to start issuing a series of press releases on this new skyscraper. I'm going to say, you know, I, I went into the building the other day and I took with me one of our professional psychologists and we noticed that when we got up on the lobby of the fourth floor, the colors that were used in decorating the fourth floor of that lobby uh, according to my psychologist, that's what causes depression in the workplace. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you see the colors there, and, and I don't know who laid this building out, but this is really bad stuff. That, that lobby on the fourth floor is as bad as I've ever seen colors. It's going to be a very depressing place to work. That's one, one press release. Then I'll come back with a press release a couple weeks later. And I'll say, you know, I was up on the 57th floor. I had my construction engineer up there. We were just looking at the quality of work, and we found one of the windows is out of square up there. And, and that window being out of, out of square up there, you know, that's a really dangerous situation. We could have an, a, a worker may fall through that because that's really slipshod construction. And so I'll, I'll point out all the negative that, that is there. And, and then about two weeks later, I'm going to take another tour, and I'm going to say, you know, as I was walking through here, I was looking at the restrooms, and, and there's really not enough stalls for the women. This is really a sexist building that they've constructed here. They did not <laughs> yeah. have enough. Con and so what I'll do is, through a series of sniping little cuts, I'll just build. Now, what it means is there were 100 lobbies on this building. I found one I didn't like, and that's what I'm going to talk about. There's 10,000 windows in that building. I found one that's out of square, and that's what I'm going to talk about. There's 500 bathroom stalls in that building. I found one that was not enough, too small. That's one. And so what happens is we get into this thing of finding a negative 
and speaking about it. And so we don't see that, hey, we got 10,000 people that could be employed mm -hmm. in this building. Mm -hmm. This is great state-of-the-art technology. This is good stuff. We're going to find one lobby and complain about it. We're going to find one window. And, and that's what's happened to America in the last 100 years. We have found everything negative in America, and we now feel guilty. Our president goes across the world apologizing for America because he's been taught that we ought to be guilty about it. I mean, look what we did to all the Native Americans, why we had slavery, why we had the witch trials, and we'll go through every negative that's out there. And so if you ask people in America today, name 10 things positive of America, 10 things negative, you'll get 10 negative things faster than you get 10 positive things. The words have been stout against America. She was a wholesome, delightful land, but they want to bring her down. They want to tear her down. And what they do is they start speaking stout words and say, and, and by the way, I, I, I've got to jump on, on the thing with, with like the, the, the witch trials. Yeah, there were 27 people put to death in America, should not have been, but it was stopped by ministers of the gospel who used the word of God, say this is wrong. But at the same time, there were 500,000 put to death in Europe. Now, 27 in America, 500,000 in Europe. We're going to talk about the 27, not the 500,000. We don't keep things in perspective. We say, yeah, yeah, we did have 27 put to death, but you know what? The Word of God is what stopped that. It's and not the man what started that did it, it repented over. And the man that did it repented when he was confronted by the Word it. of God. And it stopped it. And that's why we didn't have 500,000 like Europe. We had 27, and that was the end of it. Two years, they went for decades in Europe putting people to death, calling them witches. And that was wrong. See, and what happens is we, we let me give you a, an example I see in universities all the time. This book right here, as is an original, Alexei de Tocqueville did this book. This is called Democracy in America. He traveled America in 1831 for eight months. He wanted to see why America was so different. And he actually came here to look at our prison system because he's, he's a political official in France. He's over the prisons in France. He says, America doesn't have many prisons. How come we in France are filled with prisons and theirs aren't? And so we got, and by the way, ours were so unfilled in America that one of our founding fathers pointed out that in the 16 years he was on the court in New York, he was appalled that they had eight murders in 16 years in the state of New York. Well, Chicago's got one every eight hours. You know, they're having a murder every other year in the state of New York. And it's not because it's just more people. No, it's not. No, no, no. And, it's because and of see, the spiritual climate that's right. that, that has been so down the river, but ha, 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 we're in an awakening. We're, awakening. we're going to get it and back. We're going to get it back. And see, he came here and said, how come you guys have got all the population you do and you got nobody sitting in your jails? And he wrote about it when he got back to Europe. He said, these guys, religionists everywhere. He said, the first thing that struck me on my arrival in the country country was the religious atmosphere of the country. He said, in France, I always saw religion and government moving in opposite directions. He said, but in America, they were joined together as one. He said, religion rules everything over there. He said, they have a society for every need. They have a society for the poor, for the homeless. They have a society for drunken sailors. They have a society for women prostitutes. They have a society to take care of everybody. The Word of God is doing everything all over. And he talked to, he said, their families, they don't have divorces over there. They have intact. And he goes through and praises all the things that make America different. He said, this is exceptional. And that's where we get the term American exceptionalism. Yeah. He says, I don't think any other nation will get to what they've done. He, he praises it. Now, this is a book that is still studied in universities today, Democracy in America. Here's what it looks like today. Now, look at that. I think there might be a little difference between the original and between, you know what they did? What did they take out to make it this small? They took out everything it says about religion, everything it says about family, everything it says about faith. And you ain't got anything left. See, these are stout words against this. Yeah. And this is deconstructionism. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's, that's Satan to, 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 uh, to Eve. Has God really said, no, is, is America really worth it? No, you read this, America's not very religious. Hey, read this one. America's real religious, yeah. and that's what made us different. See, that's what we've been subjected to for the last 50 years is a steady diet of this kind of nonsense right here. And if we keep repeating the nonsense stuff they tell us, if our words are stout against, you know, America really is not that good a nation. We have all these blemishes. You bet we got blemishes, but we got more good than's ever happened in any other nation in the world. And if we don't start getting back to pointing out the good stuff and why it is that people come from all over the world to seek liberty here and why they come here to become prosperous, if we don't start saying that stuff again, we're going to buy into this deconstruction nonsense and we'll be just like Eve on the outside of the garden the looking in. Faith is, is extremely contagious. Yeah. <clears throat> Positive be, or negative. Oh, yeah, both ways. Both ways. You begin to talk fear, and it'll just It'll go spread. everywhere. But if, if you begin to say, uh, everywhere you go, hey, brother, 
Have you noticed just how really we are blessed? Yeah, that's right. You know, and, that's and right. you just begin to talk, hey, man. People will pick that up God and it. is moving that's in right. this country. That's right. <clears throat> and, Life uh, and death and the power of the tongue. I was in, I voted early uh, in the primary. And uh, I, I was in the voting place and there wasn't anybody in there but except just glory and me and the p people that were voting attendants. And uh, so... Uh, I, I began to tell them about how God's moving. One of them asked me, how's things going at the ministry? And I began to tell them how God is moving all over the world. We just got back from, from the, the UK and how, mm -hmm. what a meeting we had in London and, 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 and all these wonderful things that are going on. And I could tell as I was telling uh, these ladies this, they, they hadn't been hearing that. No, that's right. And, that's and, right. And all of a sudden, that's right. they perked up, and, and you, you just need to be talking this. Well, Brother Copeland, I'm not seeing it. It's because you're not saying it. That's right. You get in the Word and begin to say this, it'll start happening around you. The miracles will begin to take place around you. God will begin to get information to you that you've been missing out on. Either you didn't see it, or... It got blocked somewhere by your stout words against yeah. it. But you begin to confess the Word of God. Yeah. We have the victory. He always causes us to triumph. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even the world, yeah. even our faith. I believe, I receive. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you, you begin to speak the words of, of, of God. As you do, you begin to see things that you haven't been seeing. That's right. You begin to hear things you haven't been hearing. That's right. And Jesus said, I only say what I hear my father say. Mm -hmm. Okay. He said, my sheep know my voice. That's right. He also said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yeah. If any man, any man, any man hear my voice and open, I will come into him. Well, um, you begin to confess those things. I hear my I hear my Savior's voice. Praise God, He speaks to my heart. I hear Him, and I say what I hear Him say. I do what I see Him do. Yep. You begin to hear and see. Was it is it Jeremiah twenty nine eleven um, twenty twenty nine? I think it's twenty nine eleven where God says, "I know the plans I have for you." Yeah, and prophecy, they are good. And they are good. And see, we need to start saying that over our country again. Oh God's yes, God's plans for this country is it twenty nine eleven? Let me yes. get there and see. It is and seventeen. Uh -huh. Yeah, is that it? Oh, okay. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of yes. peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. We got to start saying that over our country again because too many people are looking at our debt and our deficit and everything else and saying, man, we'll never get out of this. And this is, no, I, I love what President Reagan did when he ran for office and came in. What was it? The, the interest rate, the inflation rate was 21% interest yeah. rate, 17%. He yeah, said, that's big. That's hard. all right. We can whip this. This is a giant we can defeat. And my gosh, in four years, Look how things turn. And people were saying it's going to take to the end of the it, century to, to fix it, this. It's decades, so bad. Decades, maybe. Decades, maybe, if at all. We were out in four, four years. years. You know? And, and that's the kind of faith and optimism you got to come in with. Because he didn't speak that stuff. He says, no, there's nothing here we can't whip. These are giants now, that we can defeat. Right, right before Jeremiah said that, over in the 17th chapter, look what he said. Cursed be the man, the fifth verse, that trusts in man and makes flesh his arm, or man's programs, his arm, whose heart departs from the Lord. This is somebody that at one time had his eyes on God. Yeah. But he got off and got his eyes on the government yeah. and on, on the, the plans. Yeah. So if you're looking at that, they're going to fail. Yeah. Men will fail you because men, men don't have without God what it takes to succeed at anything. Maybe momentarily, but it'll collapse. Yeah. Now... He will be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good comes. Yeah, that's right. You don't even see it. Yeah. Somebody else over there being blessed and you don't even know it. You don't notice it. But yet, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord whose hope the Lord is. For he's like a tree yep. planted by the water that spreads out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat or drought comes. Yep. So here you've got 
the, the person that is speaking the blessing. He's chosen life. He's chosen blessing. And that's what he's speaking. So he sees it when he comes and he lays hold of it with his faith. And yep. the more he does, the more and he expands what, and grows. What's significant is Jeremiah gave this word when they were surrounded by the Babylonian army. Now, there's no more dire circumstances than what he saw everywhere. And look how he talked. Yeah. With, with that, with yeah. Nebuchadnezzar and everybody looking down he their nose at him. He was seeing the good coming. Yeah. And All, everybody else was he's out here. That's right. He's he said, you got your eyes off the, the wrong Lord, stuff. And you can't see good you know, when it that's happens. That's right. That's exactly and right. Man, that's true today that's, as it was. Welcome then. to America, Israel back then. Same thing. And if we don't act differently, if we don't see the good when it comes, if we don't start looking for the good, if we don't start telling the good and overcome this deconstructionism nonsense, if we repeat all the bad things they say about us, man, we're having faith for the bad to come to pass. We got to get a whole different mindset, a whole different mouth set on this thing. Amen. And it, it's our problem, my brother and sister. It's the problem uh, in the hands of the believers. We're the ones that have this to do. We are the ones yeah. that need to be speaking faith. We are the ones. It, it's at our feet. It always has been. Yep. If the devil gets a hold, it's the church's fault because we've been given the authority to put him down and put him out. Second Chronicles 7, if you want the nation to be healed, all it is, God's people got to do something. You got to do it. The whole nation if gets my healed. People, he if didn't my say people, the nation. It he said matter. if my people will repent. And if even if it's a small part of the nation, even if, even, if it's only, even if his people and nation is only a small part, that's all he needs. He just needs that part. If that part will do it, the whole nation will turn around. Yes, sir. And it's, it doesn't take a majority to do it. It just takes His people to do it. God has invested reason for this place to prosper. You He's got a lot invested in this you nation. He has. He has. He has His purpose invested here. Yep. And he's not giving up on it, and he's not no, unwilling sir. that it should not continue because no. he's invested too much. Yes, sir. He's redeeming the time, Praise and he's going to save God. that investment. <laughs> yeah, and we're right in the middle we of it. We are right brother. in the middle of we, it. We're going to see it come to pass. Right. And I'm seeing it come to pass. We're going to live inside the walls when they go back. When, when this thing gets rebuilt, we're going to be some of those living on the inside, yes, not on the outside. Yes, sir. You know, they stood out there and complained. We're going to be on the inside yes, thanking God because we were part of rebuilding this thing. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Yep. And Father, we give you the praise yeah, and the honor do. for it. The Word of the living God is in the move. Yeah. The Word of the living God is in your household. It's there. The Word is active. Yeah. The Word is alive. And the Scripture says, Seeing then we have a great high priest passed into the heavens, let us hold fast to our professions, our saying what He has already said, our saying His Word, our saying the same thing, and come boldly to the throne of grace and find grace and mercy to help in a time of need. Glory to God, David. I don't preach me happy, brother. <laughs> brother David, now I'll be back in just a moment. Kenneth Copeland Ministries is partnering with Champion the Vote. Go online, kcm.org slash vote. Use the voter lookup tool. Find a family member, friend, colleague, neighbor, anyone. And make sure they register. I mean, get, get the word out there. Double check that you're registered as well. And then vote. Friday, on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast, is always offering day. The scripture says, Let him that is taught in the word respond unto him that teaches in all good things. Now, what we've been talking about here, as you respond to that, these things strike your spirit, you hear them, you receive them with gladness. And Jesus said in Mark chapter 4 that 
If you don't have any root in yourself, then you become offended and the devil steal that word out. Now, how do you get root in yourself? Well, what kind of root? The scripture says we are rooted and grounded in the love of God. This is God's word that love said these things. So as you sow uh, towards that word, you name that seed. You, you sow towards it. I receive this word. I receive the revelation of it. I, re I put it in my mouth. I put it in my ears. I go back over it. I get on kcm.org and I watch this again and I listen again. I'm committed to this. You can't make that commitment that strong until you sow into it because that's where growth comes from is sowing. Now he said, he that sows to his flesh reaps corruption. He that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting or zoe, the life of God. That's the way that the revelation of it and the excitement of it begins to take root in your spirit and you're not just quoting Brother David's revelation or Brother Kenneth's revelation. No, you got your own. Mm -hmm. It's growing in there. Praise God. And you begin to say, I'm blessed, brother. Glory to God. I'm part of the biggest thing that's ever happened in this nation yeah. and in this world. Amen. That's right. Father, reveal to your people what their part of the finances of this ministry are. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, just believe God and obey God for more information, all the things we're here for you. Go to kcm.org and, and uh, we want to help you. Go to church this weekend. Yeah. David, God bless you, sir. Thanks, Ken. What a great two weeks, That's man. It's been fun. Amen. Hallelujah. Thanks, You're blessed in everything you do, everything you say, and everything you touch. That's right. You too, sir. Amen. You too, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> We'll see you next time. Uh, Gloria and Kelly are going to be teaching all next week. Don't miss it. Remember this, Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. For this week's broadcasts on DVD or CD, today's product offer, or for more information on Kenneth Copeland Ministries, visit our website at kcm.org. While you're online, you'll discover a resource of faith-based teaching and free information to help you find the answers you're looking for. If you need prayer, call Kenneth Copeland Ministries prayer line today. When you walk by faith, everything is going to be all right. Hello, I'm Gloria Copeland. Join me and my daughter Kelly Copeland Swisher on the Believer's Voice of Victory. We're teaching on having ears to hear. Make the decision to hear the word and obey it and you'll receive God's understanding. And when you have his understanding and obey it, you'll be blessed. You won't want to miss these special broadcasts.